Hi, I'm Brian, and this is City Setting. And today on City Setting, I'm going to make hard apple cider, but I'm going to do it a little differently than I might have thought. Okay, we're back. Now, as I said, I'm going to make hard apple cider. Here's the thing with apple cider. It's a very, very, very simple thing to do. A lot of people like to make things complicated. A lot of people like to keep things simple. I'm a simple kind of guy. I want it to be easy. This should be fun. I, I like to think of when I do these videos and when I make stuff for people, I want it to be that anybody can do this. And I mean literally anybody, as long as you're 21 in the United States. Anyway, I also said I was going to do it a little differently. Normally, when I set out to make a brew, and, you know, hard apple cider would be an example, I pull out one of these, a carboy, okay? This is a five-gallon carboy. This thing's big, it's heavy, and when you start mixing it around, sloshing around, you get quite the workout. I know, my parents doesn't say that I work out a lot, but, you know, that's what this looks like. Anyway, today, I'm going to do things a little different. I'm not going to use this. We had a question by one of our, one of our subscribers who said, can I just use the plastic jug that the apple cider comes in? I thought, yeah, why not? I've never done it that way. Um, I've seen other people do it, and I've seen other people use all kinds of various fermentation vessels. Plastic doesn't seem to be a problem for fermenting, especially at this level. Obviously, distilling, things like that, which are illegal in the United States, they do require a different level of equipment. We're not getting into any of that. Even mentioning that word, I probably shouldn't have even said anything. But Regardless, they mentioned a one-gallon cider jug that it came in. Okay, I'm thinking they probably look a lot like the old-fashioned wine bottles, you know, something something like this, right? Which this is perfect as a fermentation vessel. vessel. Absolutely, you can use this. What I'm looking to do, though, is just use the container it came in, okay? Now, I'm using apple juice to make this. You can totally use whole apples, whatever, but my point in using this container serves a couple of purposes. First, this is Aldi apple juice. It has no preservatives in it. When you read the ingredients, it says filtered water, organic apple juice concentrate, ascorbic acid. That's just vitamin C. That's good for you. It's not going to hurt. What you don't want to see is any kind of sorbates and things like that. It's even better if all it says is contains apple juice. I've seen those too. But the advantage to this is something that a lot of people might not have think about. When this is sealed at the factory, at the manufacturing plant, it's sterile inside. Everything in here is sterile. There's no excess bacteria. So you don't have to boil this. You don't have to sterilize it, sanitize it, nothing. It's ready to go. The only thing that I'm going to do differently is I'm going to put an airlock in the top. You can stretch a balloon over it, punch a hole in it, that kind of thing. Here's the thing. If you're going to make your own alcohol and you're going to do this more than once, invest $2 into an airlock. And I'll show you what an airlock looks like in a minute because conveniently, I forgot to pull one out to do this video. And through the magic of video, we have an airlock. Now, what an airlock is, it's a really simple thing. It's a piece of plastic, and they come in a couple different styles. I happen to prefer the two tube type. You fill it with water, as you can see the water there. I hope you can see that. Essentially, what happens is, as CO2 comes out of this, it pushes up through this tube and down into that one, forcing this water down and up this way, and the air bubbles come out. But bugs, bacteria, other stuff, other air, oxygen, can't do the same. They can't push back through. Because here's the thing, if the pressure outside was that great to force, force it all the way in, this would explode and um, you'd be dead. So uh, it's just not possible. It would take a, a tremendous amount of pressure to do this. And you need a stopper. Now, this happens to be just a rubber one that fits in the mouth of this bottle. And it works really, really well. But we'll get to that in a little bit. You want to just make sure that you have one of those. Some other things that you're going to need. The apple juice, of course. A funnel. Preferably dry. We're going to be pouring sugar through this. If it's wet it's going to stick and make your life uh, kind of more complicated than it really needs to be. A glass. It could be plastic, but I prefer glass. A hydrometer. If you don't have one of these, I suggest you get it. It's not necessary, but this can tell you how much alcohol you're actually going to have in your brew when you're done. Um, all the stuff that, I'm sell that we have here, like the uh, airlock, the hydrometer, stuff like that, I'm going to have uh, links down and below to the stuff that I would use, the stuff that I recommend getting. It's all on Amazon. And if you happen to use those links and purchase anything, we do get a very tiny commission for doing it. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. You still get, like if you have Prime or whatever, you still get the best price possible. 
So um, yeah, use those links in the description. You're also gonna need a cup of sugar. Now, plain old white table sugar is just fine. I happen to like the, the brownish cane sugar and stuff like that. It doesn't really add much flavor. There's a tiny little bit of molasses in there still. So it's brown, it looks fancy, but it doesn't really change the flavor much. I just like it because it's not as processed as some of the white sugar. White sugar's been bleached. I hate to tell you, but it has. So what I've also done is you need yeast. Now I'm using Danstar Bell Cezanne yeast today. And I have about a teaspoon, not quite a teaspoon, maybe half to two thirds of a teaspoon dissolved in a little bit of our apple juice, okay? Um, and what that's doing is it's getting started. It's not really a starter. It's rehydrating. It's letting the yeast start working a little bit. You'll see some bubbles in there. It's actually starting to already work on that and produce CO2 and produce a teeny tiny bit of alcohol. It takes takes a little time to get, get it up to full strength. But once you have all that set up, this is a super, super simple thing to do. I mean, this doesn't really take a lot. The glass, you're probably wondering what this was for. It's because once we do this, we don't want this to be all the way to the top. So we're gonna pour off just a little bit of this apple juice. Let's see here, eh, a little bit more than that. This is a half gallon, by the way, uh, 64 ounces. And I also have to make room to pour this back in. Um, that, that looks about right. And uh, have a drink. If you don't like drinking apple juice, you won't like the cider that it makes. So make sure whatever apple juice you get tastes good to you. Um, I've done this with this juice before several times. I know it works. I know it's great. It's got a nice flavor. It's very apple-y. And the, the cider that comes out of it is just, it's just really nice. Okay, continuing on. Actually, you know what? I misjudged. I'm going to have to add some sugar in there. I need to make more room. Some might say that I just wanted to get more apple juice to drink and they might be right. If pressed, I pulled off probably about eight ounces, including an ounce for there. And all I'm gonna do, take my funnel, drop it in there, start pouring in the granulated sugar. Now you might say, what do you need the sugar for? Well, it increases the alcohol content. Okay, you can do it without the sugar. You can totally just do straight apple cider. That way, it'll be a little lower in alcohol. I like to mix mine and blend them with fruits and stuff. So I like to add a little bit and give it a little more kick. Now, when I say more alcohol, the most basic ones might be four, 5% alcohol. This might come out at nine to 12. I'm gonna measure it in just a minute and we'll find out exactly what it'll be. That's where the hydrometer comes in. Here comes the hardest part of the whole thing. Put the cap on and if you notice, you can probably see it. See all that sugar sitting at the bottom? Can't happen, gotta shake that up. And this is where having the small container is nice because that five gallon versus this, and remember the whole rule of a pint's a pound the world around, that means a gallon is eight pounds. That makes this 40 pounds plus the jar. That makes this four pounds. Much more happy shaking four pounds than 45 pounds. So once you get that shaken up, you wanna make sure that if it sits for any length of time, you don't see any sediment yet. You wanna make sure it's all in there. That is the food for the yeast, and that's what's gonna make your alcohol. So if it's just sitting on the bottom, the yeast won't really, well, they will get to it, but it makes it take longer. Now, I'd like to say at this point also, there are people out there that will say, oh, you need yeast, yeast nutrient, and you need this, and you need that, and there's all these things you can add, and you know what? They're right, but so am I. You can make this super easy, you can make it super hard. People have been making alcoholic beverages like this for thousands of years. They didn't even have plastic. They didn't know yeast was a thing. They just used a stick that their grandmother gave them because it was magic. What they didn't realize is yeast was imbued into that stick and it actually put some yeast into the brew. But even without that, you can go pure lambic and just get wild yeast out of the air. They are all around you. Scary, but true. You're breathing them right now. They get into this and they can make it a really amazing apple cider or a really nasty apple cider because you never know what you're gonna get. That's why a lot of people will they'll add Camden tablets to their stuff. And you know what? This was sterile when I bought it. If it wasn't, it'd, it'd have spoiled in the bottle sitting on a shelf. So it's safe. This is, this is fine to do. I like to keep things natural, keep it simple. And I'm also stalling because it's just not dissolving the way I want it to. 
Oh, you also want this to be at room temperature. You do not want this cold when you put yeast in there. Below 50 degrees can actually stall the yeast and make it not really perform. And over about 110, 120, you don't want to go past 120, but over 110, the yeast might not be as active. So keep it in the 60 to, to 90 degree range and you're fine. Here in Florida, we have the air conditioning going. So I know that in our house right now, it is 74 degrees in this room. That's a little warm, but you know what? When it's a little warm, the yeast acts a little faster. Now, I know that the room I keep it in is more like 72 or so. So I know it takes just a little bit longer. But anyway, so it looks like we're, we're there. Yep. No floaties. Nothing floating around in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take this, mix this around real good. Oop, probably use a funnel. Pour this in. Now, this is my yeast mixture. As I said, again, it's just a little bit of yeast mixed with some apple cider. Now I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to take a reading. Okay. What I mean by a reading is I'm going to use a hydrometer to calculate how much sugars there are in this relative to uh, a neutral substance like water. Okay, water equals a 1.000. Anything above that has sugars in it, that kind of thing. Um, in the second half of this video, uh, I will show you what we mean by that when we finish and actually measure the complete alcohol. But for now, I'm gonna take some of this, I'm gonna pour it in this tube here. Just to about there, so it's going to float pretty good. Put that back in there. Get out my hydrometer. And what it is, it's a weighted tube with measurements on it. And the ones you're looking for, you probably can't see it on this video, starts at 0 0.990 and starts going up. And sometimes they even say beer, wine, you know, that kind of thing. What I'm going to do is just drop it in. Give it a little spin to get rid of some of those bubbles. Wait till it stops moving around. I'm going to read that as 1.090. Now, off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly what that comes out to, but I think it's somewhere around 11% alcohol. It's actually pretty decent. It might even be 12 or 13. I'm not sure. Um, but that's if it goes to completely dry. Now, because of my methods, most of my brews do go completely dry. You can sorbate early, you can cold crash early and things like that to get a little bit of residual sweetness. I happen to like them going dry. I know I'm getting all the alcohol out. And you know what? You can let that sit a little bit longer. Let that yeast die, literally just die. And it stops. And once it does that, no more fermentation is going to happen. Then I can sweeten it back up, put a little more apple juice back in, things like that. But that's later on in the video. For now, I'm going to put that in just like that. I'm going to mix it up again a little bit. Then comes the big deal. This is where you want to have an airlock, okay? This is so I can keep stuff out and keep the air in. And what will happen is over time, this will start bubbling. Like I, I can actually simulate. It'll do that all on its own. When that happens, you know your yeast is working. Um, I actually want to reset the pressure right there. Okay. If you don't have an airlock and you absolutely just can't go spend $2 to get one, first, I urge you, do it anyway. Find $2. Look in the couch cushions. It's probably there. This will make things a lot easier for you. If you stretch the balloon thing, yeah, it's probably safe, but it's just more of a pain in the butt. And you can use this thing forever. I mean, it's not like they break. They don't use up. Use it forever. I've actually snapped one off in like years of, of using these things. So don't, don't worry about it. But basically that's where we're at now. Now we want to take this, we want to put it somewhere cool, relatively dark. So if you have to cover it with a blanket or something or a, you know, whatever to keep it dark, you want to do that. Sunlight will actually kill the yeast probably. Um, so you don't want to go there. Um, stick it in the closet, put a blanket around it. It'll be fine. As long as you don't mess with this too much, you're good. In about six hours, maybe 12, maybe even 24 or 48, don't freak out, it's gonna start bubbling. In my experience, most of the time it started in, within about six hours. Okay, some notes on yeast. I used a fancy yeast. I used a, a beer and cider type yeast, okay? You can, if you really wanted to, use like Fleischmann's bread yeast. I've done it 
everybody's tried it at some point. And if they haven't, they're lying. If they tell you they haven't, they're lying to you. Everybody's tried it. Will it make a huge difference? Yes and no. If you use Fleischmann's yeast and you don't ever do anything to it and you just let it sit for months, it'll probably taste just fine. If you think after two weeks you're going to get something that you're going to want to drink, you're probably wrong. It won't taste that good right away. But in time, it will taste good. If you use a yeast made to make alcohol, they tend to come out faster, a little bit better. I was a big believer in just using bread yeast for making ciders and, and cheap wines and things like that. I did that with bread yeast all the time, and it worked really, really well. A lot of people out there are going to hate me for this. And you know what? Express your, yourself in the comments. It's all good. They do work. They don't work as well. They're not made for this. They're made to make bread, which means they're made to make more CO2 and less alcohol. This stuff is made to make less CO2 and more alcohol. Now, there is also a common myth that they won't go past, say, 11 or 12 percent. That's not true. I've made 15 percent alcohol using bread yeast. It's all about control and attenuation. They don't they don't tend to drop to the bottom and come out as clean. You'll get streakies and stuff. And they don't look as nice. Let's just put it that way. Whereas this should come out sparkly, crystal clean. And, you know, it'll it'll taste really good in just a couple of weeks. Um, speaking of that, you want to put it in that cool, dark place for about two weeks. Apple cider can take longer and it can be it can be done faster, too. I tend to find that two weeks is about right. If you see that it's still actively bubbling pretty good, let it go another week or two. The trick to this stuff is don't rush it. Let it happen. It's a natural process. We can't say you yeast happen in five days. It doesn't work like that. Some juices, it'll work faster. Some juices will work slower. Some yeasts are faster. Some yeasts are slower. That's basically all I got. But the rest of the video will be coming when this is ready. So see you then. Hey guys, as always, if you like this video, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell. That way you get notified every time we make a new video. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.